Hello, this is another presentation for Chem 2, uh, interactive concept presentation concerning nuclear chemistry this week. <laughs> so we're not doing an experiment today because nuclear chemistry is a little challenging to do at home, but we are going to be talking a little bit about nuclear reactions. Um, so as we know, probably what you think of and what I think of when I think of a nuclear reaction is a nuclear bomb. That's my first thought. Um, as we know, it causes a huge wave of destruction. It can be incredibly dangerous, radioactivity, um, a lot of heat with it, um, radioactive burns. So it's a very, very dangerous thing to play around with. But the question is, how does it get to that point? Um, so that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. And obviously, I'm not a nuclear chemist. <laughs> Um, but I have some general information about how that reaction works in a nuclear bomb, as well as what's going on with nuclear fission versus nuclear fusion, as well as what's needed for a nuclear fusion or fission, um, because you do have to do this in a very carefully regulated environment. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the nuclear bomb. That's probably the most simple thing to understand. So when we look at something like Hiroshima. Um, the bombs that were used were uh, very distinctly made. So they had a couple different compartments in them, and they actually used two different types of uranium. So they used uranium-235 and uranium-238. And these are slightly different, and the way they get them a little bit different is by enriching, which we'll briefly talk about later. Um, but what they did is they had one compartment with the about 40% of the nuclear-235, when 60% of the nuclear 238. And then in the compartment before that, they had a just basic chemical reaction going on. Um, obviously basic enough, but still powerful enough to cause a reaction. And the reaction from that caused a breakdown in the first compartment, which then sped into the second, which then caused all of the nuclear reaction. <laughs> Um, so the reason they do this is because 235 and 238 uranium are slightly different. They have slightly, slightly different weights, not anything significant about a 2% change, but it's enough that it does change their speeds a little bit. So they use that to keep powering up the, um, the reaction. And what we get when we get the nuclear reaction is obviously a breakdown of, um, the uranium, which causes the heat and energy release. Um, and like I said, we get a lot of heat release. That's one of the other big things with it. Um, so what we're seeing here is, like I said, a breakdown. So they're expecting somewhat of a fission reaction here. Um, so we're seeing a breakdown because of one separating into two, which then releases a large amount of energy and a large amount of heat. Um, and that is fission. So fission is two smaller atoms, uh, or sorry, one atom being broken down into two smaller atoms. Fusion, on the other hand, is what we see in like the sun. It's where smaller things become one big thing. Um, so to complete a nuclear fission or fusion here on Earth that is not the sun, <laughs> you're going to need a couple things. There's a couple distinct items you're going to need. So nuclear fuel, of course. Um, a nuclear moderator, new, uh, reactor coolant, control rods, and then a shield and containment system are like the basics of what you need. Um, that shield containment system is very important because if there's any change, this is a very volatile isotope and very volatile element in general. So you don't want to have um, a breakdown where it starts having that reaction because it will have a chain reaction if you let it. So... <laughs> um, but you can also, uh, in some of these nuclear power plants, you go through the enrichment process, which is where they take, and it generally takes about 4,000 stages of it to get it from 235 to 238, which is just, like I said, a very small difference, but a very important difference. Um, and then fusion, you're still going to need the same sort of things, um, except now you are taking two small things and making one big thing. Um, and this is one that can be easy to get out of hand. If you keep contributing, it keeps growing. Um, you know, that's going to become an issue if you can't contain that. So, 
Um, so yeah, they have a lot of safety procedures in place now with uh, nuclear power plants. We've had a lot of learning experiences in the past with that. Um, but, you know, just from this basic knowledge that I researched for this presentation, um, I can say honestly that I never want to be around anything nuclear. <laughs> it's very volatile, very touchy, um, and the energy release that you get from these reactions is very, very strong, whether you're going fission or fusion. It's going to be a big, strong reaction. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this little presentation on the basics of what's happening in a nuclear reaction, as well as what's happening in fission versus fusion. And I will see you again next week.